Can you describe the process of lettering a comic book? What steps are involved? Oh, so uh, first let me actually show the artboards. All right, what I have to do is I create an artboard that is uh, the final size of the actual page uh, that's going to be printed. Then uh, you add what's called uh, bleed to it. So that means if you could see this black line right here. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, let me show you another page that's already. Okay, I'm just going to add an extra blank page. So the white page is, or the white part is actually what's going to be um, the finished product. Okay. And you have to allow any kind of printer. It doesn't matter what type of printer it is. It could be a $25 printer from Walmart or a $500,000 printer that you would see at the print shops. Yeah. Uh, you have to allow for shifting um, okay. on every page. So that shifting, um, everything outside, uh, that way uh, the ink can go clear to the end of the page. Uh, so you have to go a little bit bigger and that can be cut off. That's known as the bleed. Okay. So uh, I have to set up the page. So it is the correct size uh, with the bleed and everything. And then I go through and um, I create the first layer and I will just ins or I'll place all of the artwork and fit it to size exactly. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll create two more layers. One is called the wording. One is called the bubbles. So let's go back to the page I was working on. I believe it was page nine. Yeah. So as you can see right here, the bubbles are um, locked. So yeah. I can't affect that layer at all, but the wording is unlocked. And so what I'm doing is I just grabbed all the wording from the script itself. And I'm just placing it here, getting it to the right size, and then I'll end up locking that layer and unlocking this layer so I can create, get on the right layer, I can create the bubbles. Now, I have it set for white with, let me see. What is that over here? Uh, one point stroke. And the stroke is on the outside. Okay. So once I have this actually set, I'm going to unlock that layer for just a minute. Oh. And I'm going to center them both. Okay, so now it's perfectly centered in there. And I want to make it look a little bit more realistic, like kind of hand-drawn, actually, before we get that far. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, to adjust the spacing up at the top and on the sides, on the bottom. So I'm going to lock that wording layer again and adjust it so there's about enough room for one one letter up there. Yeah. One letter above, one letter below, and then one layer on each side. So now I'm going to readjust it. So they're both centered again. Lock that wording layer. So I'm going to use the direct selection tool and adjust these so they look a little bit more hand-drawn and less um, 
uh, they, look more they, do, they shouldn't look. Yeah, they they need to look more organic, just yeah. not as perfect. Yeah, uh, I don't want to bring it out too far. You know, that'll look way too robotic. Just you just kind of eyeball every one of them. Yeah. Okay. Now, once I have it exactly how I want it, I'll come back here and use the actual selection tool and zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to place it. So, the English speaking language, we do speak uh, right to left and we read, you know, top to bottom. So, or we read right to left and top to bottom. So, in the script, where do I have the script? We can see that Jacob um, is actually. Sorry, right here. Jacob is speaking first and then Michael. Yeah. So the problem is uh, Jacob is over here and Michael is over here. So what we have to do is adjust it so that where he's speaking first and then him, it the arrows will actually still guide you through everything and uh, everything will still look appropriate. Yeah. It, it does make it a lot easier when the artist... <laughs> does switch on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier and a lot cheaper um to have the letter just readjusted than the artist <laughs> try to <Yeah>. redraw a page. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to create well let me actually adjust this one or create the bubble for this one. So you can see a little bit quicker. Now there is probably a faster way to do this. And yeah. if there is, please hit me up and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, it just seems a little big. There we go. It does help uh, to hit shift while you're doing this. Uh, that way it doesn't uh, go up and down. Yeah. Okay, just last minute check on that. So also, uh, when I'm placing this, I don't want to place it on anything that really needs to be there as far as the artwork. Never cover up the artwork. Yeah. 90% of uh, the readers are there for the artwork. Now, the reason I'm not placing it up here is because I don't want the bubbles or the uh, tails to actually cross each other. It does just cause confusion. Yeah. So I could probably drop it down a little bit more if I bring this out. I don't know. What do you think? Is it too far away from the, the speakers? Yeah, I though? think it's too far away. Yeah. Might be too far away. Because that's going to be a long. Hmm. Let me get the script up. Um, Let me actually try something with this first. Yeah. 
of the script and I'll see if there's anything we can do with the script. You know what? I kind of want to break this up into two bubbles here. Let's see if this actually works. Hmm. What was that? What? Copy. Paste. Yeah, I think I like spreading that out just a little bit more. Okay. What lettering style did you choose to use? Uh, this is, uh, whew, it's been so while. Uh, it's been so long. Oh, crap. Uh, Crime Fighter. Crime Fighter. Okay. So Crime Fighter was one of uh, Blambots uh, that they uh, allow for um, specifically like indie comics and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Is that someone used for Roundhouse Hooligans? No. No, I didn't think so. It's different. What one did you use for Roundhouse Hooligans? Do you remember? Oh, I don't remember offhand. Um, oh. I want to say with Roundhouse Hooligans, uh, did I use a. Hmm. I want to say there was one, uh, it was an Adobe one. Oh, okay. Does the distance of the bubbles to the characters mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything um, necessarily. Like most people don't, uh, as they're reading it, they're not um, associating like a longer uh, tail uh, with yeah. like maybe a pause or something. Um, what it basically does is it just, gives me enough room uh to actually kind of break this up a little bit yeah but i do want it distinctively like further to the left 
if yeah. he's speaking first. Yeah. So able to break these two up was pretty nice. So let's see. Now onto the tail. So I'm on the bubbles layer. I'm going to come over here with my pen tool. And I want to start about halfway between um, the speaker and uh, the actual bubble itself. Yeah. And it's just three quick little um, things. So here's one. And I'm going to kind of... Mm, I never want it straight on. I'm not happy with that. I highly recommend um, getting really good with the pen tool. Hmm. Ah, grab the wrong thing. Okay. Where is the stroke? Move that to the outside. So as you can see, it comes in a little bit, but that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is use my Pathfinder tool and merge them. Then if I need to, I can still adjust these. All right. Now I just have to make two more. But since that top wording layer is locked, I don't have to worry about it at all. And that's it. Cool. So what I would recommend is for beginners who are just getting started um, with lettering, basically find a comic out there and let me... Create a, a, a comic with the exact right proportions with, like I said, the bleed. And then find a comic book page online. Um, any comic book page will do. I highly recommend something with a lot of text. That way, uh, basically anything written by Kevin Smith will work just fine. Um, get it over there and then start playing around with the fonts, um, start playing around with the kerning, just everything until you get it exactly how you like it. If you can find the right font uh, that they're using, um, as long as it is uh, 
how do I word this? Uh, free to use that particular font. Um, if, you know, for indie, uh, if it's paid, make sure you pay the font. Those creators, that's how they make their money. So um, there's legal reasons. You have to make sure that you have the rights to that particular font, uh, the rights to use that font. Um, so just start adjusting everything uh, within that font that you can. And we're talking the spacing uh, between the letters, the spacing between the lines, the width of the letters, everything. Just get it exactly fine-tuned. And then from then on, just start putting it in there. Have fun with it. Um, yeah. That will give you a good foundation to start. And then after that, it's just a matter of uh, uh, placing it in the comic, uh, making it so it's it's legible. And um, don't be surprised if you know you're getting a lot of feedback, uh, like. For example, uh, Lucas was just saying, uh, you know, we, we need the uh, wording closer. Um, sometimes it's, hey, it's this person speaking, not this person. Uh, so I have to have notes all over the place as to who's in which scene, even if it's a comic that I've read a million times. If I was reading a Superman comic, I would still have notes about Superman and everything just in case uh he's wearing a different disguise or you know if if batman is dressed as matches malone that time you know you you want to have each individual uh tail going to the right person so yeah there's there's been many times that you've come back to me and said like uh it's switch wrong these character. oh yeah <laughs> my bad wrong character yeah 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 um yeah now, having all of this, uh, the layers locked and stuff like that. So if I need to readjust the characters, like I said, you never want to cross the, uh, the tails, but sometimes you might be able to get away with just switching uh, the boxes around, which is not that big of a deal and then you can take your uh direct selection tool and move the tails to the right person sometimes just get rid of that bubble and start again uh it really doesn't take that long to create one bubble especially once you get in the rhythm of everything yeah yeah cool all right so go back to the page we're working on the Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sweet. Okay, and this is uh, the rest of the speech. Uh, let me see. Pull up the script here. Actually, I'm going to move this even further. So what I want to do is just kind of group them um, by panels. So this panel, it's have you figured out? So that's this one. Let me oh I didn't want to zoom in. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay. Oh, I forgot I got that layer locked. It's really nice to lock the layers, um, but every once in a while, I mean, the last thing you want is uh, to accidentally screw up and uh, put a bubble on the wrong layer. And then yeah. when you go to merge everything, all of a sudden you've lost everything that you were trying to, uh, you were trying to say. So let's see, these two are in, I'm just trying to get these kind of groups so I know, you know, one panel, two panels, and then looks like three more things in here. So I'm just duplicating this text just to make it easier. 
and then I'm gonna copy this. What? Paste. What? Text color. Is your text color same as the background? Huh. No. Uh, Doesn't look like it. Isn't it up the top there? Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. What was it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a gray panel up the top there. That was your um, text color. Well, that's the long way of doing it, but uh, copy that. Okay, so this one I'm going to make bold. All right. What programs are the best? What programs are the best for lettering? Oh, the best programs. Um, definitely a vector program um, is best for lettering. So I highly recommend uh, if you financially can do it, go with Illustrator. That's what I'm using now. The reason I'm using Illustrator is because I have an account at my other job that allows me to do this. If uh, it, it's a monthly fee and I absolutely hate monthly fees on a program that it used to be a one-time fee that like I bought it, it's mine. Why am I paying for it? Um, so that being said, uh, there is always, uh, Oh, what is the name of that program? I, um, affinity, um, it is affinity illustrator i think it's affinity illustrator yeah affinity designer sorry affinity designer yeah. um it is it is a vector based program um it, it it's a one to one with adobe illustrator they just do things a little bit differently yeah. Um, so the reason I do like illustrator is because there are so many more tutorials that you can find on illustrator, um, affinity designer, man, those illustrators are, are those tutorials are just hard to come by, uh, but they are out there. That being said, um, they recently actually just got purchased by Canva, I believe. So it's still kind of up in the air as far as what they're going to do with their pricing model. Okay. Um, I believe they said that they're going to keep it the same, but you never know. You just never know. And I I hate that we don't know. <laughs> uh, here's a question. Explain a vector layer to us. Oh, okay. <laughs> so vector is, okay, with, let me... Pull up a picture real quick that I can explain it. Um, 
you typically have uh, with uh, with Photoshop and um, vector, sorry, not vector, um, raster graphics, they're pixel based. So um, if you've ever zoomed in on a picture, you'll see it starts to become just those square blocks. Uh, think of Mario way back in the day. This is a yeah. quick Google search. I mean, look at Mario. This is a perfect example of just a pixel. Uh, each yeah. individual square, like look at this one, it's its own pixel. So the last thing you want is the lettering to start um, getting those attributes. Uh, you want the lettering to be clean. Uh, a vector is actually a mathematical equation. So uh, I don't know if you uh, remember like a slope equation from um, uh, math class. So M equals the rise over the sum. Uh, no, sorry, the rise over the run. I just had to look it up. Uh, <laughs> that that gives you a um, a nice clean line. And yeah. no matter how much you zoom in, it's going to stay the same. No matter how much you blow it up, it's going to stay the exact same. It's going to stay nice and crisp and sharp. Good thing is you don't need to actually know the math to be able to do this. Yeah. Uh, it's just a math based formula. Yeah. So it does make it a lot easier. Um, it keeps everything nice and crisp at all times um, without ever having to get too far into the weeds. So, does that answer your question? Yes, that is the question. Yeah, and okay. Photoshop. Photoshop doesn't do these sorts Photoshop, of Photoshop. Yeah, they are a uh, pixel-based, so a raster-based yeah. uh, graphics program, whereas Illustrator is a vector-based program. Okay. Now, Photoshop can handle vectors, and Illustrator can handle uh, raster, but it's just it's. Been, they work better in their own separate world. Yeah. I highly recommend keeping it there. Uh, yeah. Another good uh, program that I've actually used in the past to letter comics is another Adobe product called InDesign. Uh, that is a, they claim the lettering is vector based, but I mean, I've zoomed in on it. It's a raster base, um, but it does handle things very well. Uh, once again, you're looking at Adobe, that monthly fee. Uh, there are other programs out there. Uh, like you can, you actually can letter in uh, Procreate. Um, yeah. If you have the iPad. Once again, you're looking at the uh, uh, a raster-based program. But it can be done. I don't particularly yeah. like doing it that way. Although I use uh, my iPad, I use Procreate almost on a daily basis to draw. Um, I'll I'll never do a. Uh, I'll never letter the comic in there. Uh, that being said, those people who are just getting into it and can't afford any other programs. Um, I've actually seen one program on the iPad called uh, uh, Comic Draw, I believe it's called. Yeah. And yeah. it's just a drag and drop from your script. Um, it does still keep it kind of robotic. Uh, but if all you're trying to do is get the comic out there, hey, it'll work. So, yeah, cool. 